In this webinar, I will explain one very important feature of the Libra project, and this is the collateral. Libra is designed as a stable coin and has therefore backed by various different financial assets and also by some other kinds of fiat currencies. In this webinar, I will explain how the backing works and what the potential benefits and risks of the backing are in this context. First, let's go one step back. If a customer wants to owe Libra and wants to transact the Libra, then the customer takes the Euro and provides the Euro to the designated dealer, which is one intermediary in the Libra ecosystem. The designated dealer then takes the fiat currency and invests it into safe and stable liquid reserve assets, the so-called Libra reserve. And in the proposal of the Libra 2.0, so the adjusted concept of Libra, which has been published in April 2020, there was also stated how this Libra reserve will look like. And the Libra reserve will consist of more than 80% of government bonds and less than 20% of bank deposits. And the government bonds will be mainly short-term government bonds, which are issued by very solid and also highly rated um, jurisdictions or countries. And this Libra reserve, if this Libra reserve is invested and is provided by the designated dealers to the Libra Association, then the Libra Association will mint the Libra tokens. And here again, important, we have a 100% backing. Therefore, the Libra Association will only mint Libra tokens if the respective amount of Libra reserve has been deposited by the designated dealers. And this Libra reserve and this stablecoin system here has actually two kind of layers and two different infrastructures. First, there are single currency stablecoins in the system. And these single currency stablecoins are basically um, stablecoins which are backed by one single currency. So for example, there is a Libra Euro and the Libra Euro will be backed by um, just Euro area denominated bonds and also bank deposits. Therefore, the Libra Euro will more precisely consist of less than 20% Euro, Euro bank deposits and more than 80% of government bonds from the Euro area. But beside this Euro single currency stablecoin, there will also be a Libra US dollar or a, or a Libra British pound or potentially in the, in the future also some other kind of single currency stablecoins. Because the Libra Association also said that in the future more single currency stablecoins uh, will come. But what's very important with the single currency stablecoins is that, for example, the, the Libra US dollar will be solely backed by US bank deposits and by US government bonds. And the Libra British pound will, will then also be backed um, in the same manner um, by government bonds, which are denoted in pound and also with pounds on the bank account. And this is very important for this whole system and very essential to understand. And beside these single currency stablecoins, there is a second kind of stablecoin, the so-called multi-currency stablecoin, or also referred to as the Libra coin. Because this multi-currency stablecoin consists of the various single currency stablecoin. So how one can think about this basically is that this is a, a, a mixture of these single currency stablecoins. So in the system, in this blockchain, there is one smart contract which basically creates from the single currency stablecoins one multi-currency stablecoin. And why is this multi-currency stablecoin important? Well, basically it depends on the use cases and, and the new use case has come up due to the single currency stablecoins because these stablecoins are mainly be used in industrialized countries where you really wanna have a low exchange rate volatility. And here, for example, the Libra Euro is um, perfectly fixed to the Euro. So therefore you do not have an exchange rate risk and therefore this product will mainly be used in the Euro area. But the multi-currency stablecoin, on the other hand, will mainly be used in developing and emerging economies. Because in these economies, um, very often, you want to um, diversify your, your holdings. And what you want to have is you do, do not want to have one means of payment which is just backed by one currency, but which is backed by various different currencies. So for example, backed by Euro, US dollar, British pound, maybe Swiss franc, and other currencies. And therefore, the multi-currency stablecoin is very promising for these developing and emerging economies and can be expected to, used, to be used in these countries, okay? So this is basically why this um, two layer infrastructure of stable coins is a very clever idea by the Libra Association and addresses also different use cases. 
Besides Libra, there has also been central bank digital currencies proposed, which also received a very high public attention. And this central bank digital currencies can actually be integrated into the Libra system. But let's go one step back and just first define what a central bank digital currency is. And such a central bank digital currency is a digital currency issued by a central bank. And it constitutes from the perspective of the holder a claim against the central bank. And this is very important because the holder of the Libra token has a claim against the Libra association. But in case of CBDC, the holder has a claim against the central bank. And this is very important because the Libra association in theory could become bankrupt and therefore the claim would basically um, default. So you as a holder would not have the possibility to get your money back. But this is different with central bank money because the central bank is the sole institution who can kind of print money and provide emergency credits basically um, yeah, as, as um, massively as it wants. Therefore, central bank money is seen as a more stable and less risky as commercial bank money. And this is also a very important difference between CBDC and Libra. CBDC are heavily researched these days. So about 80% of global central banks analyze CBDC and think about uh, issuing a known CBDC. But there are a few pioneers, for example, China, which has also started the prototyping and some parts of government payments are now paid out in the CBDC, in the digital yuan. Besides China, also Sweden and some um, island nations as the Marshall Islands, the Bahamas, or also the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union are there pioneering. They have also announced prototypes, are also currently testing prototypes and might also soon launch their own CBDC. But what you also see here is that it's mainly China and Sweden coming from the industrialized countries who are um, quite far ahead and can be um, called um, CBDC pioneers. But the ECB is not that far at this moment. The ECB is heavily researching CBDC. So we might in, in a few years or maybe decades see a digital euro issued by the CBDC, but it's not the first priority and it's very unlikely in the short run. Because CBDC is researched by the ECB. The ECB has also started an internal task force and also an external task force with some other central banks. And there will also be a report in the winter or autumn of this year about CBDCs, but it's really unlikely that we will see a short or medium term introduction of a CBDC because the ECB um, directory board, so the, the governance body actually of the ECB mentioned that cash is, cash is just very, very important these days and they do not see a need to introduce a CBDC um, on the short term. However, this is how a CBDC can be issued and how far the euro area is. And what Libra now basically offers is the solution to integrate CBDCs into the Libra system. And this would look like um, this. Basically, the Libra euro would not be backed by euro bank deposits or euro government bonds, but the Libra euro would be, would be replaced by a CBDC directly coming from the central bank. And this is a very interesting, a very interesting situation where basically a new form of private-public partnership comes up. So these days, the public sector in form of the central bank is partnering, for example, with banks to distribute um, cash because cash is money from the central bank, so the public institution, but it's distributed via a private institution, so via the bank. And here in the future, we could potentially see a system where the central bank issues a CBDC in digital form, so again, a public actor, but it's then distributed also by private actors as banks, but also in this context, the Libra Association. So it's possible that we will see a Libra system in a few years where basically um, lots of CBDCs, so from the Federal Reserve in the US, maybe also from the Bank of England, comes to the system and the Libra Association then uses these CBDCs and tokenizes this CBDC and then basically transforms it to a currency basket, which can be used in developing and emerging economies. So this is something we will not see in the medium or the short term, but we could see in the long term and it's really interesting to think about it because this could kind of change the current monetary system remarkably. Great, so this webinar actually should um, have given you an introduction into the, the stablecoin concept behind Libra. So there is single currency stablecoins backed by one currency as the Libra Euro, but also multi-currency stablecoins which are backed by different currencies. And these are mainly expected to be used in developing and emerging economies. 
However, also as central bank digital currencies, so-called CBDC, become way more widespread, these central bank digital currencies could also be used in the Libra ecosystem. And this will provide a very interesting private-public partnership, which we could see in a few years, or maybe also in one decade. Thank you for your attention.